Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo, with the horse lightning takes. And let's get right to the news. Ah, screw the news. We're going to talk about Ahsoka. Oh. I have some more interesting things I'd like answers to. Okay. We saw Anakin's Force Ghost multiple times throughout the series, correct? We believe so. We believe so. I think the last one is pretty much a confirmation because it's out in the out in the wilds, right? Out in the wilds. Do you think Force Ghost Anakin has spent any time with Luke? Depends on who you ask. Because we have this quote-unquote canon book called Shadows of the Sith, <laughs> which implies he hasn't. That at one point Anakin kind of reaches out to him and tries to tell him something, but it's kind of garbled, if you will, hmm. to put it very simply. But so I don't it... think he's been like having conversations with Luke. I don't think they've, they've been why talking. why not? Well, here's, here's the big problem He showed with that. up at the season finale of Ahsoka. He was there. Well, not the... to mention... The world between worlds thing and well here here's the thing dave never read that book dave Filoni, clearly I mean. so he doesn't i mean I, i'm not trying to be an ass about it but he probably doesn't care what that book has established no he wants his story yeah well the big problem is we also if we're going by canon stuff we have a comic book that implies darth vader was at exegol like sometime after the empire strikes back he saw the the final order fleet whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. he saw the sith death star destroyer things whatever we want to call them so he would know all that. So if, if you're Anakin Skywalker later on as a Force ghost, wouldn't you like bring these things up to Ahsoka and Luke? Especially Luke? But he didn't. He didn't bring it up to Ahsoka. That's, but why wouldn't you bring these things up? You should. You absolutely should. This is a huge thing that's coming Anakin would have known he about. He kind of gave his life to destroy Sidious, and Sidious is still there. So you'd be like, hey, Luke, Ahsoka, we got a problem out there. I didn't succeed with the prophecy thing. So are still around but anyway yeah. so no i don't i to, to answer your question i don't think so but that's what i want well that's what i wanted in the sequels mm. I, I mean th there's just a big problem with force ghosts in general that they should know a lot of things i mean they come from like a non-linear place apparently they can travel galaxy to galaxy too yeah because he's in the other galaxy yes showing up there so they can go like anywhere anytime it feels like so you're you wonder why they don't get involved more and outside are there of rules Quite possibly, but outside of the story, of course, we, we know, like, you don't want just the Force Ghost to show up all the time and be like, hey, you need to do this and this and this, and you know, it's we got too a much of a here. MacGuffin and... or a plot device, then? Yeah, not a, mo not yeah. a MacGuffin, but. Yeah, it's just it's just a, a problem, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want your stories dictated by the ghosts. The ghosts that have infinite knowledge. Infinite knowledge, just show up and go, like, hey, guys, this is a problem. Yeah. All right, let's continue on to another interesting question. And this is just a, a weird thing I came upon today. How weird does it kind of feel that our heroes didn't confront Thrawn? Sabine was the only one who came face to face with him in the entire show, but he was supposed to be the villain, right? Yeah. Isn't that weird that the hero didn't encounter the villain? Well, yes and no, but I think I think the main problem, one of the main problems with Ahsoka is it's really about what comes next. I just did a video on this kind of yesterday over on the other channel. It really wasn't about like this story. It's about setting up Thrawn for later. It's about getting these two stranded in the other galaxy. It's about getting mm -hmm. Ezra home so he can encounter Hera and warn them that Thrawn is back. It's like everything in this show feels like it's set up. It didn't really focus on its own story and try to make it really something special. So I don't think... I think Filoni's looking at it as like the first act, right? And you don't necessarily want your villain and hero to fight in the first... I mean, you, you can and then your your hero is going to lose to the villain. So kind of what happens here. Mm -hmm. But there is no like face-to-face -face encounter between them other than with Sabine. But at the same time, if you watch Lord of the Rings, you can say, well, Frodo never came in contact sure. with Sauron, but at the same time he did. He used the ring and I see you. Yeah. He scared the pants off of him, you know? Yeah, well, well Sar I mean, Sauron is handled differently. He's handled like the, the shadowy figure in the background the mm -hmm. entire time. And in the books, it's not like Sauron's popping up all the time. He, he doesn't. He's just, he's the eye at the tower, right? So, it, it you know, it's a different kind of storytelling. Whereas this. Thrawn's shadow, Thrawn's threat just doesn't yeah. feel real because he didn't really use it. But I mean, they're, they're different villains too, right? Sauron right. and Thrawn. Thrawn is a human being and again, Sauron is kind of like the the big ominous devil, essentially. He's something more than just, you know, our heroes are going to run into and, and fight, even though in the movie they were going to have Aragorn fight Sauron in the flesh. But whatever, they didn't do that. I just find it very weird that Thrawn, in some respects, doesn't even feel like he was the villain of the show or the season. 
they had Hera constantly going, Thrawn, he's scary, we can't let him return. We're scared of Thrawn. And the other senator's like, who cares? Yeah. Well, I mean... And Hera would, took it very seriously. She's obviously run face-to-face. She has personal trauma yeah, involving yeah. Thrawn. You could tell Mon Mothma took it more seriously. She's like, is this a real thing? But then you look at the other senators and they don't, they're don't they so flippant and, and casual about it. Yeah, it it was, takes the edge off. It was a strange way to handle it. I feel like hearing his name and the possibility that he could really come back should have maybe jolted us more. Well, I mean, Thrawn is not around that often, right? We don't see him, even in Rebels, like he gets called in because they're having problems on Lothal and it's like, we need we need the, you know, bring in the, our best relief pitcher to shut down this game, right? That's kind of what it is. But he's it's not like Thrawn is like the mastermind of the Empire, right? He's never presented as like their top guy who's like overseeing all military operations and kind of keeping everything on lockdown. He's he's again their closer. He's he's brought in later on. So e- even within the canon so far, it hasn't been like mm-hmm. they should believe Thrawn is just going to win automatically. I mean, we the audience who who know Thrawn and love the character might feel that way, and I think they're they're kind of playing on that. They're playing mm-hmm. on this perception we have of Thrawn. Being the, the guy who's just going to win, because we also know he's been in, obviously, Heir of the Empire, where he right. gave the New Republic some fits. So that, that that's really the problem with Ron. It's like, you're, you're just basing it off what the audience knows, and what the audience who doesn't know him, you're just kind of telling them, yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to be a big problem, even though not everybody seems to treat him that way. Here's, the, here's kind of the last thought I want to bring up today. And this will be interesting, because this will involve the comment section somewhat. Cool. I want to know what your favorite battle in Ahsoka was. And then I wrote them all down and realized there were so many, which I also wrote after it, are there too many battles? Um, I don't think there's too many. I, I Okay. Do you want me to list off the battles? You can, but I, I, I'm I'm fine with like a battle in episode. It's supposed to be it. It's supposed to be action packed, right? Yeah. Well we have Ahsoka versus Anakin, Ahsoka versus Morgan, Ahsoka Ezra Sabine versus the zombie night troopers. We have Ezra and Sabine versus Shin and her posse. We have Ahsoka versus Balon. Three times, Ahsoka versus Marok twice, and uh, Sabine versus Shin twice. Ahsoka Balan three times. Oh yeah, because Ahsoka versus Balan twice. I don't okay. know why I wrote down three. Felt like three. Felt like three. Yeah, there's only two, I believe, unless you're. I'm trying to think of how there. I made up a third in my head, maybe. You did. Yeah. See, you're just the one inserting too many battles. Into okay, it. that's because there's a lot of battles. <laughs> I probably missed some. Sure, yeah. These are ones that all involve a lightsaber. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I know he promised us a lot of battles, but then I'm like, are, maybe there are there too many? Can you have too many? Well, I think you can have too many, but I don't. I don't. I never felt like it was like too much okay. lightsaber. Okay. Maybe because I'm like, you know, we're some Clone Wars, you know, fans here. And it's like, yeah, Clone Wars had a lot of lightsabers. Prequels had a lot of lightsabers. I think. I think that's kind of something we've learned to accept and appreciate. So, what battle is your favorite? Probably Morgan and Ahsoka, that because was she was the really most natural. Good. She's actually like a martial artist, so oh, it, she is. it shows. Yeah, she actually has a history in martial arts. Yeah, and the expression that she's able to give while fighting—you could actually see a conversation on the screen. Yeah, something about their fight looked really, really good. I think it was partially the speed at which she—I mean, she's actually—it feels like she's actually doing the moves, whereas some of the other ones feel like choreography. Right, there's a certain fluidity. To yeah, her. you can tell she's a fighter, or not a, not a fighter. I want to call her fighter. That's kind of making it simplistic. She's a martial artist. Yeah. Yes, I had a hard time because so many of these had different like ramifications, and emotional tugs. Obviously, the Anakin and Ahsoka battle it hits you in the emotions, but it's not like a battle battle because while it is a fight, they're fighting for something different. The stakes are totally different. Yeah. I do say I love watching Ahsoka battle Balin. I feel like the first time she battled him, she felt drastically outmatched like she didn't even pull out her second saber because the power behind his swings was too much for her to do more than two-handed response yeah but then second time they battle that changed yeah and she still lost i mean i think people i don't know if she technically really lost the second battle who yang sent his ship in it she just wanted to get down to the other three yeah but i think she loses in the long term against Mm. Balin, which i think is a good thing like if you want balan coming back and now that we know ahsoka stranded there with balan and there's probably a a round three at some point a a real round three not an imaginary one (laughs) just Mm. kidding of course but you do want again you want the hero to lose to the villain so it feels like more monumental when she can eventually defeat him i thought she was going to beat i thought she might kill him 
because I thought, well, she kind of had her big thing in episode five, and now she is, you know, she's even more advanced and ready for this fight, and she might kill him. Glad it didn't happen that way. Oh, but, I'm glad too. Yeah, but no, I I do also like the Anakin Ahsoka fight. Like Hayden Christensen and the he emotional just, pull behind that one is so strong. Both that and just like I like his, you know, his combat, his his saber fighting is just cool. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, I love the power he was showing behind it too when he was kind of being his Vader. So the way he switched in between the roles, he did a yeah. very good job. Yeah, Hayden did exceptional. But I, if you're just talking like pure battle, which is what I kind of thought you were asking, which one was the best? Yes. I think it was Ahsoka and Morgan. I might give it to the two. I even liked the way that she was the only well, she damaged, destroyed one of Ahsoka's sabers. She Hopefully did, Ahsoka yeah. grabbed the pieces because I mean Hu Yang and the ship, they could probably fix it. Oh, they got like two other lightsabers on there they for could her fix anyway. It. Yeah. They better fix it. She needs to have her second blade. Hmm. Maybe she goes back to back down to one. Or also they implying that she's gonna be using the Talzin sword. Hmm, she, I don't think that's I think she was holding it for a while. I don't know if she took it did with she? her. I have well, no I idea. I mean, I know she killed her. I don't remember what she did with it after she killed Morgan with it, or helped kill, because it was mm-hmm. a double saber yeah. and sword slice. Slice? Slice. Yeah. Maybe she's going to use that Night Sister sword. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, no. bad idea. Bad idea. But those are kind of... I, I want people to comment what their favorite battle was. Yeah. And why. And, I mean, yeah, and why. Because, I mean, again, I was Depending Anakin Depending on what cool you rated on. yeah. Like, I'm not rating it on uh, just coolness of Anakin mm-hmm. and just having Hayden back because that would win just by default. Sometimes you like to watch Shin beat the snot out of Sabine. Sometimes, sure, that's sometimes. Not, that wasn't bad either. No, like, I don't think any times. of them was, I think some of them were obviously better than others. I think some of them feel a bit slower paced. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, again, we, we talk about Morgan's actress. She's professional, Phenomenal, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So that looked better than someone who's kind of training to be doing lightsaber combat if that makes sense like she's doing real martial arts the others are doing trained to do choreography for lightsabers i guess Where she could pick up the weapon and actually fight and actually with it fight yeah without yeah. somebody saying this is the moves i need you to do she could just do the fight yeah and we've we've talked about a lot about rosario taking it very seriously and putting in the, the training i'm not i'm not trying to say they you know anything disparaging about their performances but i, I think she was just the best yeah that might have just been the best to watch it felt yeah. good watching it yeah, you could tell that was someone who trained their whole lives to, to do this thing. All right, well, I guess that's going to be all we got for you this time. Now it is your turn to answer some of these questions. Which was the best fight in there? Or which one did you enjoy the most? However you kind of want to approach the question, I suppose, because there are different ways to approach it. Whatever you choose to do, though, leave those comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.